please not <laughs> you know there there are people who ask uh, when you talk to them about salvation what what am i get what am i getting saved from now this is the answer this is what you're getting saved from it's a captivity that not only not only is it upon the earth physically it's also upon the the entire the entire galaxy uh, okay the entire i don't know how to put this so that you could understand everything everything that is in the form the same form as the earth is in captivity Have you ever wondered why when you read the prophets God is talking to mountains? <sighs> Then the scripture goes on to say that for many times the devil has desired not to let the sun shine upon the earth and not to let the earth bear fruit. wishing to devour people like a roaring fire now for you to understand the depth of what i just read you need to acknowledge that nothing god created nothing god created was barren everything that god created had the power to reproduce so when you have an event and i'm referring to the entire existence that is surrounding us if you now uh, watch what scientists are saying and they've been observing galaxy actually um astronomy is not just about curiosity there's something more to it it's about our very own survival things are happening not just upon the earth but upon the planets upon the galaxy even even galaxies that are surrounding us that have caused scientists to be apprehensive and to watch not because they, they can do anything but to count their days because they have no hope but we do don't we and that is the salvation of Christ and that's why he says that he might save us from the captivity of this age that is what this uh, this part says because this he says that the devil so that thing that you call planet x or nibiru that is the power of the devil it is the manifestation of the devil the people of the old call it a dragon and it is written that the devil has desired not to let the sun shine upon the earth <sighs> so when you read the book of um, Matthew is it Matthew 23 when Christ is talking about what is coming in the last days that the sun shall cease from giving off its light 
that is war against the love the life that is upon this earth remember that plants plants need light to grow people human beings need light because it's from light that we get warmth and we are warm animals So sunshine is a source of life. And when you have a thing that mysteriously glides through the galaxy like it does not obey the rules of nature that other planets and other systems are abiding to. it is to fight against this gift of life have you heard of the um the cloud of debris that is between the planet um mars and jupiter okay it is said that um that cloud of debris used to be a planet used to have life upon it something happened during one of the uh, trips of this dragon that broke it into pieces and now we have just asteroids floating around there's a guy on youtube who does a very good job of examining meteorites and rocks and some of these rocks that are falling from the sky they're actually body parts calcified or what you'd call mud fossils So you see God said in uh, number 8 uh, verse number 8 that for this reason the God of glory has been merciful he sent his son to the world so that he might save us from this captivity he did not tell an angel therefore be for him children and that is why Christ came remember him telling John that this generation will not pass before the end comes now by generation whenever you see the word generation it refers most of the time to the spiritual authority that is over a land So when Christ was telling uh John that this generation or oh, I think he was telling his disciples that this generation shall not pass until they see the coming of the son of man So um the generation is coming to an end in case you are wondering we are under new new management new principalities and it is written if you read the uh, uh, the book of daniel chapter 7 that the saints made war with a beast and they took over authority from the beast 
and the thrones became the thrones of the saints. This is in reference not to physical physical um, gestures of leadership, but to the principalities of the earth. Remember, it is written that the earth is under the sway, the sway of the wicked. Another thing that I find very, very important is um, in reference to the salvation. So it is written, remember that he has prepared for you thrones and crowns. That is reference to the switch of power. Because right now the rulers are wicked. The princes of the earth, principalities of the earth, are wicked principalities, kings of the earth. We have kings too. And we have kings of kings over the earth right now. So it is written that for everyone who listens to me will receive the thrones and crowns among those belonging to me. So note that um, it distinguishes those who belong to him from those who don't. The Lord said, I will write my name. I'll write my name on their forehead and I will seal their right hand. This has a lot of similarities to um, the revelation of John which is um, in the New Testament in terms of um, the seal of the forehead and the right um, the seal uh, on the right hand. Remember he's referring to his people You know, the people of God have a seal. And I talk about seals in my blog, sheep-talk.blogspot.com. I talk about seals. The topic is titled, you can search um, a topic titled Seals and Angels, where I explain what seals are. So a seal is like something that is blocking or covering. So when you hear God tell you that I will seal you, he's talking about a power. It's an upgrade so that the the sword of the enemy cannot penetrate. It's an entitlement. That's why he's talking about your right hand. You'll be able to do things that you cannot do. You will gain power over your enemies. And you can see the next verse explains exactly this that they will not be hungry, they will not be thirsty. You see, you've already been upgraded. Your Christ has come upon the earth with angels. Angels are power to remember. So he descends with angels. The thrones are taken away. So it is written that They will not be thirsty, nor will the children of lawlessness have power over them, nor 
with the thrones. There are a couple of things that you should take away from that verse. A lot of things. And no wonder the power of God is so heavy around this text. First of all, it's written that the children of lawlessness um, it's written that nor will the children of lawlessness have power over them. Meaning that right now the children of lawlessness have power over you. It's also written that nor will the thrones have power over you or prevent them. So you see, there will be thrones referring to heavenly powers. And it is written that these powers will not stop you because they are placed upon the earth to establish some boundaries but it is written on that day you will have power to cross that boundary going to where it is explained in the next portion but they will walk with angels to my city so you see the the um what the role that the angels that descend with Christ come to do. They will walk with angels to my city. And then right here, I'll have to pause. Now this city, okay, in this book, um, the concept of the city um, has not been expounded on. In Revelation, um, which, um, okay, let me not comment about Revelation because um, there are a lot of things that I have to say about the stripping of Scripture and the watering down of Scripture that has been happening in the hands of of the sons of darkness from the time that they masqueraded and took over the reins of religion. So, let me not comment. Or let me um, let me leave the issue of the city to another day. But my um, from my understanding, and I've told you that there's a lot of power in this in this book. From my reading of the Apocryphon of John, and from the reading of the scripture where Christ says again and again and again, I'm going to prepare a place for you. I'm going to prepare a place for you. In my father's house, there are many mansions. That's what Christ kept saying over and over again in his time during, um, during his sojourn upon the earth. So when he's speaking to the city, that is my understanding on, on what the city is. It is this abode that Christ said, I'm going to prepare a city for you. So the next question becomes, what kind of place is this? For you to understand what kind of place is, it is, you need to go find the apocryphon of John so that you can you can under, you can understand the com concept of heaven the concept of the holy principalities that exist because in our current um, in our current being we are surrounded by a lot of principalities that are not holy but this um 
there is holiness that exists apart from the, the habitation of darkness that we currently exist. Remember, this age is in bounds. This age is in bondage. There is darkness surrounding us. There is a struggle to draw the very life, not just out of the humanity, but out of the earth itself. There is a reason why environmental destruction has been going on and with this um, incoming um, invasive planetary system, a.k.a. Nibiru, it's another onslaught upon the life that is on Earth. So when um, it is written that the Earth will be tilted and oceans will sweep over the Earth, and the fish will die and the trees will be broken like little sticks. That is an assault upon life by the devil. So this city is a spiritual habitation built by Christ. I would like to I will I will not see any reason why Christ would build a habitation of holiness in the midst of darkness because we are in a place of darkness And the next, the next part of the, of the verse continues to explain this. The sinners, however, these are the people who have sinned and who have declined um, the righteousness of God, the sons of darkness. The sinners will be ashamed, will be shamed, and they will not pass beyond the thrones. Hold, hold it right there. The sinners will not pass beyond the thrones. Remember, these are the thrones that, for uh, concerning which it is written, that the thrones will not prevent you, the righteous ones, from passing, passing going where, passing going to the city. What city? the habitation that has been prepared by Christ. Remember that Christ was caught up into heaven when he left the earth. So it's a similar catching up. And to depart from this earth that is ruled by principalities of the earth, the princes or the thrones that rule over it will have to make way. So it is written that the sinners will not pass beyond the thrones. There is the separations. They will try to follow, but they will not pass. That means that they will remain upon the earth And it continues to say the thrones of death will seize and empower them. For the angels do not agree with them, and they have estranged themselves from his resting places. So due to unrighteousness, because this is a holy habitation, so obviously due to unrighteousness, the angels of righteousness cannot let you mingle with the righteous. Light and darkness cannot mix. So, 
so by by remaining in unrighteousness it is written they had estranged themselves from from his resting places remember this um, this period of taking of the saints of saving from the saints of from the destruction of the devil is called a rest the rashes will finally rest from from demonic operation that currently rules over the earth So the scriptures continue to say about the the coming on of deceivers in the end of the days and those that will be disbelieve the law of God I think um I should leave I, I should leave it um for today at that another day will um will check on another part of the book but this is very powerful it has changed something in me and i hope it does you for anyone who believes or who under the sound of my voice has come to believe in Christ he is the way the truth and the life and people sometimes will say ah oh, there are many ways there is jehu there is buddha there is who there is uh, this this guy this guy this enlightenment guy I'll tell you um why Christ um is um is separate or distinguishable from the rest. First of all, before Christ came, it is true that people indeed worshiped God. not many but there was a remnant upon the earth that knew about god we've heard of adam and eve who were rashes there was enoch there was abel there was shem who delivered um the current generation that we uh, and that was another season of deluge like that the um similar to the one that this scripture has just spoken about the strange star came according to historical records that you will find in books like the colbrin historical records that you will find in ancient scriptures of what was transpiring in those days when the deluge came or the flood of noah so enoch was a righteous man and he was caught up in heaven according to other books is it um i think of i correct me if i'm wrong but i think it's um, it's in enoch when where the um, the book uh, speaks about enoch not just transitioning alone but going with an entire city that was rushes i'm not sure which uh, which book was it was 
from Enoch there was Noah, all who practiced righteousness. From Noah we go to Abraham and his descendants. We go to um, to Israel, which was given the law. Thereafter, we come to Christ. So, it is not undisputable that there were there were systems under which people were were able to communicate with God somehow. But remember that it is written in the book of Genesis chapter 6 that God said that he beheld and saw that the imagination of man had become so foul that he continually thought about evil that the Lord said, I cannot dwell with man any longer. When you see that kind of declaration, that is a seal, what I've just spoken about. It's a declaration. It's a wall of angels or a wall a wall of principalities that make sure that that is a separation of two realms. When the Lord said that he, he actually um, created a separation between, between his being and the earth. And the truth is that from that time, it wasn't so easy to access. And if you, if you can find the, the book of Colbrin, uh, please do. The Colbrin, um, it's written the, the um, is it, um, I think it's the last, the last, uh, the last, uh, the last book that is in the Colbrin is uh, is talking about the the flood. So. As I was saying, um, when Christ, by Christ um, coming on earth, what he was doing was um, using, he was using the system of, of worship through sacrifice, through bloodletting, through offering, to petition for our salvation. Salvation from what? Salvation from death. The reason why we have this ball of uh, death coming against the entire solar system every 12 thousand years is because we're in bondage by death and every sign of life that appears upon the face of this earth from men to plants to water is doing that in defiance So Christ is a petition. It's like um, 
you see a sacrificial lamb but even better not just because um, this is um, no wonder he refers himself to as a lamb this is a spiritual prince that is uh, his reign is um, Franklin uh, frankly his reign is unimaginable Christ is not just as he is and if you want to understand the kind of power that Christ exudes you need to again go to the apocryphal of John so that you can see that he not only um, is in charge of whatever it is that you think that he's in charge of, but there are various realms, heavenly realms, that are directly under him. So when he sacrificed himself, when he gave himself up, <laughs> He offered he offered a worship to his father. A worship that his father could not say no to. <laughs> I just want to explain to you that things work differently in the spiritual realm. Before the coming of Christ and before he introduced to us the worship in spirit and truth, the only way that we could petition God was through offering, sacrifice. There's something about offering. It creates um, spiritual paths through the, the heavenly realms. And that's what Christ did by his sacrifice. Some people who still practice witchcraft will carry a chicken or some kind of an animal to go and offer to one or two gods or this uh, kind of deity. That's because they're communicating to powers that are in the heavenly, um, the spiritual realm. They're communicating to rulers and princes of the earth. And their language is offering. You go with offering. It's like going before a king. If you want a king to listen to you, you carry a gift. Don't just go empty-handed. No wonder how powerful a king is. And a very powerful king will give you something in return when you give them a gift. So that's why Christ, he's the one that gave himself up. He's the one that became the blood offering, the blood sacrifice. And that sacrifice, what I'm beginning to learn, goes beyond your imagination. It will not only deliver you and I, but it will deliver our entire age. That's what we read about where I started this. On, on the first, um, the first uh, paragraph that I read. It's about delivering the age. It's about delivering the earth. It's about delivering the entire system of existence that you're in. That's how powerful that blood is. 
and that's why it is Christ that we go through. So if there's anybody under the power of my voice listening and you have believed in Christ, and Christ is accepted in the spirit. There's no word that you can say without the spirit. You have to um, accept him in the spirit. So uh, even prayers are not necessary. It's what happens inside your spirit that is more necessary. And as you accept him, for those who accept him, I pray that his spirit may come upon you. I pray that his revelation, understanding, his knowledge comes upon you. I pray that the spirit of the Almighty come upon you, fill you, and teach you. Christ enabled all this by giving himself as an offering.